what's up? How's it? Aloha, it is me, Makani. Welcome to Culturize. This is a space where we get to share and learn and talk culture, whether it's native, whether it's ethnic, whether it's social. And today we're going to get a little bit serious. Um, and we're sitting down with my very good friend, Kamu Kawahane. Aloha, brother. How are aloha, you? Aloha, aloha. I, I love that. If, if you know him, the three <laughs> alohas, and you already know. Aloha, aloha, <laughs> aloha. Yeah. And we won't tell him about the other news that you used to do. <laughs> Yeah, it's a family show, it's right? It's a family show. So first of all, I got to say, ready. I gotta say mahalo for being here because I Thank know you. Thanks for having me. that um, during the, you're an educator during the day. I'm an educational assistant. And, and you made your way all the way here from west of the power plant. But before that, um, where'd you grow up in what high school? Nanakuli, Ea Ea. Nanakuli, Ea. Yeah. Uh, Class of 87. Up. No, actually not Homestead. On the outskirts, yeah. Wow. My mother didn't want us in the Homestead. Because my mom, she's very Portuguese. <laughs> so she was like, she told my dad, because we, my dad had land up in uh -huh. Papukalea. Okay. With his first um, wife. Uh -huh. and, so, and then so when we moved to Nanakuli, my mom said no, because she said, what if anything wants to ever happen to you? They're going to kick us Portuguese out. <laughs> so, you know. That's mom's thinking. thinking that's very, ahead. yeah. So where, where in Nanakuli? Um, Mohi, Uliavas. Oh, Uliavas. The birthplace I, of Maui. I, the first, we just, I, I love it because every, every time we do seasons, there's always these connections with Maui. We're talking about how not a lot of people realize that Maui is Nana Kuli boy. Yeah. Right? And very when, much. when we're talking Maui, the, not the island, I but know. the God that you know. Uh, growing up in Nana Kuli, um, ethnic background for you. Ethnic background. So Hawaiian, I'm Portuguese Hawaiian. Portuguese Hawaiian. So I noticed you did Portuguese first. In the household, what was more prominent? Portuguese. Oh, yeah? Even though my dad, well, so my dad's Hawaiian Chinese. Mm. But he didn't grasp to the Portuguese because my mom was. The, I was going to say Portuguese woman. I don't care what ethnicity you are. Now you're Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. What kinds, of, what kinds of things in the house, like growing up, did that was Portuguese? Knickknacks. <laughs> Knickknacks. Every Why Portuguese is home. That? I don't know because they like see their kids <laughs> dusting and you know and stuff like that. And and it's a trait that I now have. My friends tell me. In fact, on the way coming here, I'm on Facebook, and I see in marketplace um, three little Buddhas, and so I tell the girls. Oh, look at these are cute. And they're like, oh, my God, more knickknacks That's for your house. right, because I was it a few months ago <laughs> that you were selling your knickknacks. Now to I move, know why. Because I had to downsize. But you're buying more. I know. <laughs> so I know. Portuguese. Portuguese. <laughs> no, that's Portuguese. <laughs> it was Portuguese and Portuguese. Oh. Get rid of things so I can move. And then. You you downsize, but you upsize now that I knickknacks. So now that I'm situated in my new home, mm. I see, okay, I get room for extra. How okay? I, that that's such yes. That's very Portuguese. How many knickknacks did you say you have at one time that you were like uh, that's a little bit too much? Um, in my own space, mm -hmm. over three hundred. Like okay, so <laughs> for real. I had what what constitute uh, what does a Portuguese look at and go? What constitutes this as a knickknack? Is it has to be a certain size? Can be this. Can be that. Wow. Be just. Because you had like, things that take teapots. up space in your room. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, even cooking wise, I know you cook a lot. Yes, I do. I, I follow you on social media and I'm jealous all the time because I'm like, you just, and you don't, to you, it's like, I'm just cooking a meal. And it's like, again, it was a Portuguese thing because wow. my mom. So she was always cooking. She always cooked. Um, and it was always, we had not just rice and meat, it was rice, meat, veggies, side. You know, All the sides, right? Everything. I always say that again. So now that you mentioned knickknacks, it was like that with food because Portuguese always had a side. It was a pickled onion, whatever Kimchi it was, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Growing up, Portuguese, Portuguese. <laughs> did you notice? Because sometimes Portuguese get mad when you say Portuguese. Not me. I don't care. It was, that's what I mean. But there's some. It's Portuguese. My mother would though. My mother yeah. would say, Ah. Portuguese. <laughs> well, yeah. did she you? would never um, acknowledge herself as Portuguese. But wow. We told her, you're the very one. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you have uncles that, uh, I? this is how I see my Portuguese uncles, perfectly groomed mustache. Yeah. Always a white wife beater. Yeah. And always sitting on the chair, even and all making used rosaries. To live, they all used to, no, I don't know about <laughs> making rosaries. But they all used to live up in, so my mom's from Hilo, Api Ihonua. Ooh. Yeah. So, and this is where her Portuguese comes in, because if you ask where she's from, she butchers it. She says, Pinua. 
So it's like, Mom, where's Pinoa? <laughs> Up mountain from Hilo, up Wainui Nui Avenue. Oh, Mary, it's Pi Honua. So the, her family, the Venturas, uh -huh. they were the dairy farmers up in Hilo. Mm. So they provided milk for the entire Hilo town, very, the Ventura dairy. Very Portuguese, very because Portuguese. I learned that the Portuguese, there's either dairy farmers or yes. the bakers. Right, or, or the ranchers. Work, or the ranchers. Uh, if you're joining us, uh, this is Culturized. We're sitting down with my good friend Kamu Kauhane, uh, growing up in Nanakuli. And it's always, it's it's kind of cool because I think you're the first person I met that was like, nope, I never grew up in Homestead. <laughs> I didn't, yeah. Uh, that's what we're going to, we're going to get a little <laughs> bit deep into this because there's, there's a part of him that I think uh, we should all know and we should, we should all adhere to. So if you're joining us on Culturize, we're talking culture, whether it's ethnic, uh, native, and this one coming up social. So you might want to stay close for this one because you're going to share something with us that I think all of us should know. We're doing it right here on Culturize. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHIGHTHING. I got to thank our good friends from Kaimi Okekai for uh, providing my uh, lole and my clothing uh, for this episode. Uh, can you let them know I wear uh, 2X? <laughs> I will remember Kaimi Okikai uh, sitting with Kamu Kauhane, <laughs> my good friend, all the way from west of the power plant. Uh, grew up in Nanakuli, Ulihava, uh, right there, Portuguese, Hawaiian. We're talking about your mother who is Portuguese. Uh, is there anything that was in the household that, that was Hawaiian as well? Besides um, dad? <laughs> <laughs> the radio in the kitchen that played KCCN every day. Nice. That was I, it. We all had that. We all had somebody. There was a radio in the house that nobody should touch. Yeah. Um, Growing up in Nanakuli, I went to Nanakuli High School. Um, I, I want to get deeper in it because there, there's a, a story with you um, that I think is, is amazing because of where you are today. And let's just ask the question, what was the first drug you took? Pakalolo. Wow. Yeah. How old were you? I was 12, maybe 11. I was very young. It, did you... Somebody gave you, just discovered it. Um, you, the, everybody was doing just it. Just hanging out at the beach, and mm -hmm. you know, the friends, you know, one of my friends, his older brother always had the pakalolo. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Uli Alves, we all sat on the wall right. before swimming. And it was just that one day the joint came around, smoke. Wow. And then. No pressure. No pressure no. whatsoever. Yeah. It was just, that's what everybody yeah. was doing. Um, and and just it was just that it was just pakalolo for for well pakalolo drinking mm. you know um, Friday nights down at the mm -hmm. beach with you know the neighborhood kids um, you know just that was it pakalolo what were you doing how often were you doing it just the Friday nights you just no the, well then it started off um, then it got to um, school time recess before class wow could smoke and drink in the bathroom. Wow. Yeah. Brave. Yeah. Um, and that was while you were still 12. What is that? Uh, seventh grade. Seventh grade. Seventh, eighth grade. And, and see, at Nanakuli, was, it was intermediate and high. Yeah. So actually, in intermediate, I was at Monolua. Oh. Only because my mom and dad, they separated for mm -hmm. a little while. And my mom and I moved to Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. And then I attended Monolua for seventh and eighth grade. And then my mom and dad got back together mm -hmm. and moved back to Nanakuli. And I went back to Nanakuli. And so you just, it was that Pakalola party. party. How, how did you, see, at the time, what was your mindset at the time? It was just that, that's what my friends are doing. I mean, did you, did you look forward to it? Did you like, oh, this is what I got to do. I actually did. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, so I'm the youngest of five. Mm -hmm. um, and then my sister, who was the youngest, there's an eight year gap between my sister and I. Okay. So by the time they all graduate, graduated, like it was just myself in the house. Mm -hmm. So it was just me. At, at what point now, now did you start to change? Wh how old were you when you went from Pakalolo? Pakalolo and alcohol were the, the same. Yeah. And then you, what did you transition into? You, did you go further? Um, then I started, um, I did some pills, some speeds. Wow. Um, in high school, then we got into um, acid. Then by my junior year, um, I tried cocaine. Then along came ice. So back in the 80s when ice came to the islands, like, uh, well, see, and the important thing, I always mm -hmm. hung out with older friends, mm -hmm. uh, older people. Mm -hmm. um, the ice was introduced to us. You, 
so this was in the span of just from from 12 to yes. senior year 12 yes. years old and you just boom 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 and by my senior year as I, I was fully blown uh, like addicted to meth already how did you know at the time um as you started to progress into harder drugs and after pharmaceuticals did did you know um or was at that point you were just like i just i just want to get high i just wanted to get high wow and then and then so when when ice came around did you stop it everything else it was a whole else? new high wow what, what 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 made it a whole new high i mean for one thing like you know um you felt like superman you could just do whatever you know like it, it, now there was different ways right you smoked it you, uh, you could inject, inject it, it and then some of them even um, would smash it up and snort it but I only smoked yeah. I, I, I try to wrap my head around it which which is is we're obviously talking about addiction now if you're joining us um, the progression was really really quick yes um, this is what we're doing on culturized we're talking about uh, culture and the culture of addiction and a lot of us think we know um, what it's like uh, we just can assume we always give these negative connotations to people who are using drugs, but we're going to find out. We're sitting with my good friend Kamu Kauhani right now, who's going to share his story of addiction from starting with Pakalolo at 12 years old, all the way up to high school, already into um, crystal meth and ice. That's what we're talking about today. We're going deep on culturized. Aloha Termite and Pest Control, your local and leading pest and termite control solution in the state, always providing you superior service with Aloha. We are talking culture, but this one is a deep one. We're talking about culture of addiction. Kamu Kauhane, again, mahalo for sharing your story. Sure. And, and by the time you, what, what is senior, 17, 18 years old? Mm -hmm. You were, did you, now do you feel, this is a weird question, because on the outside people are like, you're an addict. I didn't think so. Okay, that was my I question. I didn't think so. For, for one thing, so they would say I was a functioning addict because by mm -hmm. the time I graduated, mm -hmm. I moved to Waikiki. I was working mm -hmm. in Waikiki for the tour industry, but I was getting high at the same time. I was a functioning addict. So, so yeah, yeah it, it's that, that, so that term, I get that a lot. Um, but in your adult life now, would you, because some people use that. They say, oh, well, I can do it. I can be a functioning addict. Now that you look back, would you prefer being a functioning addict or not an addict at all? Not an addict at all. So you were working, and was it now just you were smoking crystal meth, smoking ice? How often? Oh, almost every day. Almost every day. Like I had good, I had friends who would deal. Um, me being the social butterfly, being mm -hmm. out there, always made friends. I'd be in the bars, you know. Um, meeting new people, um, staying out all night, get high all night, go to work the next morning, still high, but just get home enough time to just shower and get ready for work and smoke on the way going to work. Is, is there a point where you knew yourself personally, you were an addict? I'm, yeah, deep down inside, yeah. So at the time, deep down, you knew? Yeah, but you because it was everything to me. What is what is it? This is this is something that people think about. What what does it feel like? Because a lot of people think, oh, just stop doing that. Stop it's doing. Yeah, and you you can't. Is it more physical or more mental that you can't get out of it? It's actually a little bit of both. It's more mental, really. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that blows me away that that I, I hear that functioning addict and you were able to do all these things. Um, did you ever hear from other people while you were working that, but they did notice something about you? Were there things about you that people said that they noticed? Oh yeah. Were you hiding it? Uh, yeah, I mean, for one thing, the weight loss. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, what's the fir What's the first thing you noticed about yourself? Um, or did you even notice anything was going on with you physically? I noticed that I was losing a lot of weight as mm -hmm. well. And that is because what you just you're up all the time. You, you just do you, don't have any appetite. Oh, so you don't even eat while yeah. you. My skin was ugly. Like I would break out. Um, yeah. And, and and with that was was the high always the same or was it getting worse or was it getting even better, for lack of a better. Um. It, never, it wasn't getting better. Mm -hmm. It was just that that high. Yeah, it was, yeah. And was it because you wanted to look for? A better high, an ultimate high. No, or, 
It wasn't it just that. you were stuck already. I was, um, at the time, for me, it was fun. Wow. You know, because then we go out. And those were party days. Those were party days, the, the swinging 80s, the, the late 80s. You know, hang out in the clubs, mm -hmm. get high all night, you know. Um, go hotel hopping, like, um, instead of staying put, mm -hmm. we I lived from hotel to hotel. And, and that's the part of, and, and even that, so within the culture of addiction, you, you creating now, you had a home. I did. But a very good home at that, too. And, and see, that it, it also amazes me because you grew up in a very, I mean, we know growing up in a Portuguese home is very, very structured, and you had both of that. Right. Um, you know, my mom and my dad never did any drugs. They drank, mm -hmm. you know, um, no drugs. Did they know? Oh, my mom knew, mm -hmm. you know, um, and she hated it. Well, we'd get into it all the time. What, what was, when did she find out? It, when you were younger or when you were older? When I was um, in my, early, my late teens, the early 20s. What was that like? Well, I mean, did she? Did you just tell her? Did she just like? What so are you doing? honestly, it was one day I um, I was so high and mm -hmm. I went home, and um, you know, just being up for so many days. And one day, you know, you can have all the dope in the mm -hmm. world, and you know, one day your body's just gonna shut down, which I did. I like, I was just crashed out. Everything all laid out, and my mom came in. What the f is going on with this? And you know. Wow, I, I, I can't even imagine. If you're joining us, this is Culturized. We're talking about the, the culture of addiction um, and, and what they go through and what they think. A lot of times we, we think we know, but we don't. We're, we're finding out right now uh, with our good friend Kamu Kauhane. Um, he's going to let us know how he pulled himself out of it. So that's what we do on Culturized. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HiFiCU.com. That's HiFi, letter C, letter U, dot com. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us on Culture Rise. My name is Makani. Um, really, really um, fortunate to have a good brother here, Kamu Kauhane, who's sharing a story with us. Uh, we're talking about the culture of addiction. And if you were joining us earlier, 12 years old, Pakalolo. Yes. Alcohol, Friday night's party. Uh, that's just what we did. It's kind of a local thing, right? It that's sure just is. what we did. We yeah. didn't really think about it. And and it's it's I don't know if it's a Hawaii thing, but it's it's... Growing up in the country, it's like once you graduate from high school, you just automatically think everybody can drink. But now you're starting way. There was any of your other friends doing um, pakololo and? Oh yeah. Everybody that in your circle. In my circle, yeah. Wow. Um, did you notice when you started getting into the harder drugs and the pharmaceuticals and the crystal meth? Did you notice friends started to go away? Yes. Or. Well, I drifted off the, um, well, for one thing. You know, I just want to get out of Nanakuli. Mm. Um, you know, I want to just be in Waikiki in the party life. And do you think any any part of that was you, was it maybe a, a identity crisis? Like you wanted to be somewhere else. You didn't want to be in Nanakuli. You didn't want to hear. Um, if you thought about it now, and you tried to pinpoint a reason for getting into drugs, what would it be? Honestly, I really don't know. Wow. Yeah. That's a, it's it's because people always think there's a reason. Yeah, yeah. And it, it wasn't like I had problems at home. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say, you know, I'm sick and tired of mm -hmm. you know the pressure at home. Right. Just, it wasn't anything like that. So I really don't know. That's amazing to think that way because uh, that's what we do. We do as a side. We always think somebody drives has, you to do yeah that. to drive you to do it, 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 and it wasn't for you. Um, you spent how how long from from 17 years old 18 years old you started doing crystal meth how long was that until you got to the point and you were like this this is crazy this got to stop what happened so in 1999 mm -hmm. i had a heart attack yeah i had a heart attack um to where i had an angio um an angioplasty done, mm -hmm. where they go into the groin, mm -hmm. to the balloon and mm -hmm. the stent. Um, doctor told me, he said, you need to cut, you need to stop. I was, next time you're gonna come in here, you know, might not, you know, we might not be able to help you. So I was sober for like maybe two to three months. Mm -hmm. Then I went back, uh, just one day I relapsed, I went back all the way to 2006 when I had another heart attack. Ugh, I, I'm, Trying to fathom that, if you 
right now, fast forward, if you can f- tell us what was it that brought you out of that? Of course, th- this is cr- heart attacks. What got you better? What, what made you say, this is what I got to do? So, okay, here we go. So it was the second heart attack in 2006 when I was in the hospital that morning. The doctor told me, he said, you know, Mr. Kalani, we're going to give you two options. You can either tomorrow morning, you sleep it off tomorrow morning, you go home. Mm-hmm. Next time you come back, you might be mucky. <sighs> or number two, you let us schedule an open heart, a triple bypass, and we can fix you up. And, you know, you'll be, you know, as long as you follow doctors, you know, um, to your meds, whatever, you know, you'll be okay. So as I was laying in the hospital, um, I fell asleep and I dreamt of, so I lost a brother in 1986. He was sick from when he was small. And then so when, um, thank you, when I was in the hospital, I dreamt of my of the day of my brother's funeral to see my mom just, she scooped up and she grabbed my brother and she was just bawling. And I said to my, and I, I woke up and I was crying and I said, the hell, you know, you need to st-. like, that was selfish. Mm-hmm. I, said, I said to myself, I said, I'd be damned if I had let my mom bury another kid. Because my mom was my world, mm-hmm. you know, so. But the next morning I said, F this, F everybody, I'm done. I'm done. And that was it. And that was it. I told the doctor the next morning what I wanted to do. Well, you know, let's go ahead and schedule it. So we did the uh, open heart surgery a month after. Yeah. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for sharing your story with us. Uh, we are talking about the culture of addiction. Kamu Kauhane, that was amazing. If you think you know somebody and is in your family, get them help before you have to go through any of this. Again, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Yeah, Join us sure. for the extended version. This is Culturized. <laughs> Welcome back to Culturized. It is me, McCunny. Um, culture of addiction. Uh, this is a very, very important episode. Kamu Kauhane, my very good friend, is here, and and we he just shared. And it's first of all amazing that that you can share and mahalo for that. Um, from and it was quick for you. I mean, it, it may not have felt for you, but I, I think about it. Twelve years old to seventeen years old. By the time you were seventeen, addicted to crystal meth. Um, and your, your breaking point was, how old were you at your first heart attack? So that was in 1999, I was born in 69, so. Way early than you should Oh have. yeah. And then another one. In 2006. Because you didn't stop, you went again. And I you stopped for three, three months. Three, three, three yeah. months. Um, and then again, did the doctors correlate that to mm-hmm. drug use? Yes. Uh, and and you finally pulled yourself out. You 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 had this moi uhane. You had this dream, and you you literally would that be rock bottom? That would be a that sign. was it. That was it. And sometimes people don't get to that point, and they continue. What what do you say to people um, for that? You, you don't want to hit. How how do you how do you talk to somebody and say, hey, don't be like me. What, what would you tell them if, if you knew somebody right now that's, that was in your position? I show them my scar. Wow. Wow. I show them my scar and I tell them, look, I was only in my 30s and, you know, like, dead. Wise up, you know. From that point, you decided to say, that's it. Got to get better. Yes. Gotta, got, this is for mom. This is for me. This is for my, my family. Um, what... what what was the mindset? That, that was amazingly strong for you to go from that many years of, of drug use to be an addict and just, so what, what was your mindset? How did, you, how did you get through it? How did you just not wake up the next morning and go, I'm gonna pick up that pipe? It was just, um, I, honestly, like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, 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 my mom was just mm-hmm. on my mind, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, like no parent wants to bury a child. So it's safe to say you 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 have to find somebody or something to focus on. I guess right, yes, yeah. somebody to focus on. Um, and then I I remember 
that you always got tattoos. And I remember you talking about your 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 tattoo, like, uh, Keone. that Keone did. Keone did. Yes, Keone did. Um, is that part of the journey? Is no, this was after when my mom passed. Okay. Keone knew I was having a hard time grieving, mm-hmm. you know, so he mm-hmm. made this in honor of her, you know, her being the Eva, mm-hmm. the Lehala, mm-hmm. uh, being my backbone, a uh, couple of in my ancestral footsteps, so for whatever, for my mom. So she was always there, wow. There for me. Now your, your success story, and I call it a success, success story because if it wasn't for mom, right? Because we know Portuguese moms, no matter what you do, how successful you are, they're still going to be like, oh, what are you going to do now? Right. Right? right. Um, once you start, how many years did it take you to really, I'm good, I'm clean, I'm... Um, it, for about the about a year or so after the operation, yeah. Wow, that's, that's actually really, really good. Yeah. Um, so about a year, and then you just you just started to put your life back together. I mean, would you consider your life, you know, falling apart, right? Um, what did you do? What was the first step to get your life back in line? Um, you what were you working at the time? I wasn't. So that was so like how you said, you know, the Portuguese mom. So you better go do something, you know. <laughs> right. So I guess you know, just me being at home, mm-hmm. and so um, my my good friend Jackie, who we just mm-hmm. I just yes. Laughed. You know, she was a EA up at Nanakuli High mm-hmm. School. And she said, hey, cousin, why you not, you know, come apply. We get positions for what they call PPT, the mm-hmm. shadows, uh-huh. the power the, the pro. And so it, I started from there. So I was working with a, um, in a special needs class. And that drove me even more because it was mm-hmm. like, these kids are born with a bad hand, mm-hmm. with disabilities, mm-hmm. but yet they come to school with, like nothing bothers them and like mm. every day was a good day like <laughs> they would sing would uh-huh. dance and you know it's like but yet you know they'll never have a normal well right right what to, we to consider us, yeah. a normal life but for them it was like they didn't care that i think that already that's that's pretty amazing and and none you got hired to work with special ed and you have been doing that now um, Going on 11 years 11 years of, of, of an educator um, I love the fact that you, you, if you followed him on Facebook, you, what, what ages and what grades do you do? Right you now, do I'm in kindergarten. Mm, wow, yeah. how do you, how do you do? I love it. That? No, I, so um, I moved down to Nanikapono uh-huh. about four years now, mm-hmm. um, only because uh, there was a position open, a mm-hmm. much better position, and then um, I finally became permanent, and now I've been in kindergarten. It's going to be my second year in kindergarten. The, you, now you're like Uncle Kamu to them, yeah? No, you, Mr. Kamu. Oh, is it? Is yeah. it Mr.? Do you yeah. tell them to call you Mr.? No, my teacher you? does. So, because <laughs> she, she tries to um, get them away from everybody. The, oh, going, right, right, right. What, did, why is, how come they do that? I don't know. Would you prefer Uncle or Mr.? Mr.'s fine. Mr.? <laughs> yeah. I hear it all day. Mr. Kamu, Mr. Kamu. And I, I love the fact that they 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 love you and and I'm not no, not to take away from the teacher but I, I think they love you a little bit more right <laughs> <laughs> I'm blessed with a really good teacher though yeah yeah um, so that's it, it, do you consider now it's been now 11 years in the education system it's been even more than that uh, since you last used there's a lot there's a lot of um, recovering ad- they use that term recovering addict or they use the term lifetime addict or they use do you use those terms? For you attic yeah yeah um even if you've been clean for 15 20 years you, you're still gonna you still Say, i was an addict yeah okay um because a lot of times i think you know some people will that's almost like convincing themselves that i still am I, I i like that and do you use that part of your life i mean i know the kids are young but when you have an opportunity to talk to older kids do you use that part of your life i have when i was up in the high school okay so Aside from being in the special the special needs class, I would also sub EA in mm. some of the, the resource mm. classes, which is the roughneck kids. Mm. You know? And a kid would come in stone and be right. like, Bro, you know what? You don't know, you're not gonna go nowhere like that. <laughs> you know? Don't be stupid. I can if you don't know Kamu, I can picture you because <laughs> you in one moment you're this very um, um, caring, loving kindergarten educator, <laughs> and then you get this junior senior come in, and you're like, "Hey, your nana coolie kicks in." Yeah. So you share that part of your life with them. Are are you like just like that? Hey, 
what the F is wrong with you? I do. I, I have. Do, do and they, I give them the whole story, the scar, uh-huh. everything. And I'm like, don't be stupid. I was right, you know, I was in your guys' shoes. I thought I was Taram Taran in school too, coming in class, all stone and whatnot, you uh-huh. know. Do, do you think you gotta, we got to continue? How do, how do we combat that? How, in, in your opinion, how do, do we just got to keep, like your mom, constantly on you, constantly yes. on you? Um, do you think it's a responsibility as well outside the home? To, to it helps. It helps. Yeah. yeah. But if there's no structure at home, mm-hmm. good luck outside. Mm-hmm. So like you said earlier, it's, it's always interesting. Remember what he said, that you, you had a perfect childhood. You had a perfect home. Everything yeah. was right. And, and you just fell into it. There yeah. was no reason for it. None whatsoever. You know, my dad was, you know, he worked all his life. Mm-hmm. He's foreman for construction. Uh, he's a crusader, you know. So... And, and so you, you got it. We have to take it out of our minds that there's a reason for people to do drugs. Um, and we, I, I always say we, we got to stop um, putting negative connotations because we don't know what you go through. Right. Right. We don't know what other right. addicts go through. They, we probably went through the same problems. And some of us. May, and not every story is the same. Yeah. And, and some just can't handle right. the same stresses that we do. Um, Again, I, 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 can't, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing your story with us. Uh, we are culturized. We are on YouTube. This is the extended version. If you have any questions uh, that you want to ask Kamu about addiction, how he pulled himself out of it, what he went through, um, a lot of times we think we know. We know um, what is going on. If, if you could leave anyone with some words of wisdom that are like that, if they're that junior that senior in high school, even there's adults that, that start mm-hmm. late. Um, what would you share with them if you could? As cliche as it sounds, mm-hmm. tomorrow is never promised. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow is never promised. Culturized, again, Kamu, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you as for having me. Share your amazing story from growing up to drug use to addiction to now an educator, which mm-hmm. I think is amazing. All the kids at Nana Ikapona, Nana Kuli in, in that era, or whoever, anybody that, that, that is involved in your life is lucky. So, again, this is Culturized. We're talking culture, native, ethnic, or social, the culture of addiction, Culturized. Mm-hmm.